Welcome to the Dell Experience Lounge in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Research Officer at the Futurum Group. I am joined by Mohan Rockham, who's an engineer in technical marketing at Dell, and Steen Graham, CEO of Scalers AI. We are here to talk about an interesting use case, a reference implementation that you created. Uh, in this case, we're going into the medical side of things. What we built here is a kind of an industry standard, medical grade, uh, human in the loop radiology workflow. And I think what's really unique about this is what we wanted to show is, you know, you don't always need the highest end GPUs. In fact, you know, when you look at the, the Epic processor line from AMD, we're able to get a medical imaging stack up and running, you know, compliant with the industry standard protocols here. And, uh, you know, looking at all these great radiologist images and hopefully making radiologists uh, and life easier. What what's what's connecting these these uh, servers together? So these today are connected using uh, Broadcom 100 gig networking infrastructure. One of the things we have talked about is, of course, uh, medical images, right? So your X-rays can be not too big, but they're a couple of megabytes each. You start going to your MRIs and your CT scans. Now those are literally hundreds of thousands of images put together. They can easily go into the gigabyte size and to be able to process them quickly and efficiently. Having a strong network of, you know, in, and today's ethernet is very efficient, very powerful, very fast. And so with all that, that was the infrastructure we thought was the best to go forward with. Just, just to compliment what Mohan said is, when you get to uh, like 3D medical images, in some cases they could be like two terabytes. Some of these really complex 3D medical images. And so um, the other thing about GPUs is you, you can be memory constrained where in a CPU-based architecture, we kind of have a bigger memory footprint as well. And so you, you run into that problem, and then, you know, that, that's where I think, you know, kind of a modern CPU-based infrastructure uh, really helps out as well. So often people associate AI with very, very specific tasks uh -huh. that GPUs are tailored to accomplish, mm -hmm. where some of this stuff is actually just fine for a CPU. Isn't that part of the point? Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely the case. I mean, what what we're doing here is, you know, this is kind of modern deep learning, um, where we're you know we're training a convolutional neural network to detect the, the medical images, which would be kind of synonymous with with modern modern based AI techniques. Although, you know, today's AI, everybody's been inspired by these um, you know transformer models and these right. large language models that that inspires everybody. But just like what you see today, um, you know, with the latest multimodal models that are starting to assess images. Right, these modern-based transformer models, you know, all have the, the capability to look at images um, as well. So, so people have choice. Dell offers that choice. We talk about the democratization mm -hmm. of AI. Um, do you, where do you see this going in the future in terms of architecture and infrastructure? Dell has always been about open technologies supporting the democratization of IT overall. So. I think you may have seen in the news as well, we have a vast portfolio of offerings with a variety of you know, CPUs, GPUs, uh, for a variety of use cases. I mean, we have our largest portfolios out there. So yeah, I, I, I see us giving customers a choice and the capability to solve all of their problems if they come to a one-stop shop that is there. This is a full on-premise kind of medical grade, you know, HIPAA compliant, implementation that you can do and I think what's great about this is obviously you can do it on kind of off the shelf you know infrastructure as well and so if you think about like analyzing a bunch of radiology images I mean as long as it gets done overnight you know and you can call the patient back the next day you know or even within hours r relative to like millisecond latency when you're talking about running a chat bot <laughs> right. at a tokens per second level right so th there's there's the ability to kind of um, you know kind of use existing infrastructure and the, the one thing again another thing that's forgotten about CPUs is their general purpose. Looking at this from a medical imaging perspective, uh, any any surprises here? Any any insights? Just how scalable and simple the solution is, right? It's a. I mean, we are talking about something that can work with X-rays, with CT scans, right? A, a variety of modalities can be used and put into the system. May have changed the model a little bit, but the overall ecosystem is very simple, very straightforward, and very much something that today's hospitals have in their uh, in their e environments today. Does this system detect 
and flag, hey, we think there's an issue here, and then a human validates? Is that how this works? Yeah, it's, it's human in the loop, and then there's kind of a continuous learning element. So if, if you know, the, the model does make a mistake, the model can then be you know, refed the updates uh, with that as well. Now, you know, for this case, we, in this reference implementation, we, we showed just pneumonia because it's a large publicly available data set right? okay. that's anonymized. Okay. Um, so you can use it, but you know, you're going to want to train a custom model you know, based on different types of medical images. So, you know, for example, there's custom models you can do about bone age prediction, for example. Um, and, you know, th there's there's a good, um, you know, open ecosystem of anonymized medical images actually available in the public domain. And then large repositories of, of private medical images as well that you can kind of train these custom models. Um, and what we normally do in this case um, is we kind of use the, the off-the-shelf industry-leading computer vision models and then we would ultimately um, use some transfer learning techniques to build custom layers to detect those particular uh, medical images appropriately with high fidelity and high accuracy. You know, whether it's for kind of uh, the data science teams within, you know, within large, you know, hospital networks or research facilities, you know, that want to want to build the models or they want to go, they want to gain a production grade deployment. Um, yeah, and then Dell's got a lot of other, you know, great, you know, leaders in the medical field that are leveraging their hardware as well for these type of deployments. You know, kind of those big names in the industry you can imagine um, are all innovating in this category as well. It seems like it's a really big opportunity to be efficient and optimize things in a way that is really beneficial. I mean, as part of the research for this, I was looking at some numbers. Uh, the Radiological Society of North America They've said the same thing. They 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 they're saying that there are not enough radiologists out there. There's an explosion of radiological images coming through, and it's taking longer to come up with for them to respond to these images. They are looking at AI solutions as well. I think this is a big problem that definitely needs some help, and this is the kind of innovation that AI brings to the table. We leverage technology to drive human progress. The average state of people has been improved with technology. I think AI is one of the things which will just take it to the next level. On that hopeful, optimistic note, which I agree with, by the way, I want to thank you again for joining us here at Dell's Experience Lounge in Round Rock, Texas. Dave Nicholson, Futurum Group, thanks again for joining us.